to have uh, Mr. Henry here today. He's from the Congo of Africa, and I think he lives around here now. And if you're glad he's here, would you give him a hand clap, please? <laughs> I hope you came to have church, because I did, amen, and I would love, I even, this morning when I was sitting down reading some scripture, I said, Lord, give us a great service today, and I believe the Lord wants us to have a great service, don't you? Amen. But the question is, do we want to have a great service? Yeah. Do we want to really feel the Lord the way we want to feel the Lord? Who wants a good blessing today? Yeah. I do, I really do. So let's pray and invite him, in it, invite him in, and when it comes to worship, really get into worship this morning. Can you do that? Father, we're so thankful to be in your house, God, so thankful for your blessings, God, so thankful for all the testimonies that we have heard this week, Lord. Father, we pray that you would anoint, God, these singers, God, anoint these musicians right now, and God, I pray that your spirit would just flow freely in Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing if you can. Um, I heard we had a birthday. Where's Vicky at? Vicki Needham, come to the front, please. And not only is it her birthday yesterday, right? Yesterday, right? What am I right, Robert? Yeah, yesterday. Tomorrow is Vicki and Robert's anniversary. So, Robert, why don't you come down? Any other birthdays, anniversaries this morning that we don't know about? I know, but you're getting there. Jared had a birthday. Donna Caldwell had a birthday. Anybody else? All right. Yeah, she just don't want to come up front. She's trying to be shy. Where's Dave? Pull out your gun, make her come up here, Dave. <laughs> It's okay to have a little bit of fun. Are you ready? Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. And the best year you've ever had. Oh, happy anniversary to you. Oh, happy anniversary to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. Oh, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you and the best year you've ever had. And we know, Vicki, you got to put up with Robert. We know how hard that is, so. <laughs> Amen. What have you come to do this morning? Have you come to praise the Lord this morning? I hope so. We'll let him get back on the drum. I have before. Well, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on now. I said, I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to oh, praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Oh, can't nobody do me like the Lord? Can't nobody do me like Jesus? He's my friend. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, oh, can't nobody do me like 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 Jesus
like the Lord. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Oh, he's well, and Jesus, well, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No. Oh, come on now. I said, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No well, And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I, I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Come on around, Lord.
Bible says, to him that believeth, all things are possible. Amen. Another place, he looks at the man, Jairus, his uh, father. After they tell him his little girl is dead, and he says, just believe. And he says, he says, only believe. And Jesus says, Lord, help my unbelief. Do you believe God can answer your prayer this morning? Do you believe God can move your mountain this morning? If He, the same power that raised Him up from the dead, works in you and I, if we really believe that, as Wayne preached the other night, there is a superpower that works inside of us, and He's called the Holy Ghost. And He said, greater things than that what He did, we are able to do. I think Wayne used the scripture the other night. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. If you believe that, go back to the other song. I want Lori to come back out here and sing that. I believe, I, I want to hear you sing it like you mean it. Shout it. Look at the devil in the face and say, I believe in God. I believe in God. Amen. Pastor's liable to get. If you believe nothing's impossible, then you ought to be able to lift those hands this morning and give him every praise. Amen. Somebody asked me the other day, why don't we do this song? Why do we do this song so much? Or why don't we do it all the time? And I said, we do it all the time. They said, but it lifts the spirit. And it's true. On nights when we come in here, or mornings when we come in here, and our minds aren't are everywhere else. But when we begin to think about every praise belongs to Him, we begin to forget about everything else. And we get our minds functioned on Him in unison. And when we come together, we, we let the Lord have His way. Amen. Oh, bless His name. You guys know this. Well, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. We sing glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Take it out, buddy. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, come on now. Sing hallelujah to our God. Well, glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. One more time, take it up. Praise is to our God. Oh, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Can I hear you sing hallelujah? Sing hallelujah to our God. Well, glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, let me hear you. Oh, he
favor. Why don't you turn around, shake a few hands, hug a few necks, and let's praise God together. Because where love is flowing in the midst, we can really praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Every praise. And tell him, he's God my Savior. He's God my healer. He's God my deliverer this morning. Amen. Oh, bless his name. We're going to do the God part. Oh, God my Savior. Come on. God my Savior. Oh, he's God my Well, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, he's God my Savior. Oh, he's God my Oh, you believe that? Come on. With one accord, every praise, every praise, every praise is due. Oh, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory oh, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. worship him. Play a little bit of that, buddy. Come on. Let's worship him this morning. We're talking about Jesus this morning. We're talking about the Lord of glory. We're talking about for God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You and I this morning, if we've tapped into that gift and that grace of God, we have everlasting life. What more important way to tell him than to love on him and praise him because he's God my Savior, oh, he's God my, oh, he's God my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's God my Savior, oh, he's God my, has he ever healed you? He's God my deliverer. Yes, he is. Give it the best you got last time. Come on. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Oh, glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. Every praise, every praise, it's to our God. Oh, give God a hand clap of praise. Awesome job, team musicians. Keep worshiping this morning, church. Great job. You can be seated. long and hard, um, Aaron asked me several weeks ago if I would do offering this morning, and I guess I'm one to overthink things a little bit. I was, you know, re trying to think of what I want to say, looking at different videos, what other people had to say, and God told me to um, be a little bit more personal, and I think that's one of the reasons I don't get up here and talk a lot is because I don't like to say a whole lot about myself, <laughs> but, um, you know, God, there's several commands he gives us in the Bible. He tells us to give... Um, 10%. He tells us to give cheerfully. Um, and you know what? He tells us to that this is the one area we can test him in. And I think when you give, sometimes we can give cheerfully, and we're really good about that. You know, I, you know, some people, I love to give, so that's the area that I'm strong in. I love to give. Sometimes we're like, oh, but, you know, I really want to give God, but we're really struggling right now, and this is really, really hard. And that's where it tests our faith, and that's where I struggle. And you know what? God has really been building my faith a lot lately. And um, I told Wayne that when we started coming here that that was a big test of my faith because I wasn't ready to go. <laughs> and you know what? And God continued to, you know, build my faith. And, um, 
you know, the Bible tells us to have faith like a child, and I was listening to little Jay up here singing, and he was out singing the whole choir, sorry guys, but he was out singing us all, and you know what, I think, you know, how should we, we should have faith like that child, you know, he believes that if he, I guarantee you, if you ask him, if he asks God for something, he believes it's going to happen, you know what, so we are told to have faith like that, sometimes we, we might say, well, God, I believe you can do this, but we're thinking, mm, I really don't know, you know, I believe that God told us if we give, he's going to be faithful to us. And so it, it's our test to be faithful to him. So now it is time to take up our time and our ties and offering. <laughs> and if I could have our ushers. And Julie, will you say a prayer for us, please? Sarah, come on up.
go ahead and dismiss too and start your mom coming up. It is good to see you in God's house this morning. I had uh, reservations on whether I was going to be here today or not. I woke up feeling very, very poorly. And Dwayne looked at me at one point and said, do you just want to stay home? And I said, no, because I can feel poorly at home or I can feel poorly here. And I'd rather feel poor, poorly here because I don't want to miss out on what God is doing. You know, I mean, I would really have to be like, severely like can't get out of the bed sick to not want to be in God's house and uh, it is good to be in his house this morning and I just started living mm, if I had hope only in this world below, I'd be covered with trouble. There'd be no place to go. But when I met Jesus and I started believing, I got washed in his blood. I got filled with his love. I just started living. I just started living. I found me a brand new life. He changed my direction. He washed away all. My days are getting brighter. I just started living. Don't you look at me funny. You old prophet of gloom. I'm not one bit discouraged. And I'm feeling no blues. Because I've got God's spirit. Home pouting, got no time for doubting. I just started living. Well, I just started living. I found me a brand new life. He changed my direction. He washed away all. a holy and feeling my load is getting lighter my days are getting brighter I just started living well my load is getting lighter my days are getting brighter I just started living I just started living the good Lord. You're all beautiful. You know that, right? Some people said, yeah. Some didn't even respond. If you're beautiful, say amen. amen. There you go. I don't think you believe it. The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. So regardless of what people say, that's what the scripture says. Amen. And if you are born again, if you belong to Jesus Christ, then guess what? You're even prettier, amen? 
you have your Bibles, would you please go to 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 and 9. And once again, I'm using these verses as a springboard to get into something else today. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. The Bible says that we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful again, God, for your blessings. So thankful, God, for this chance to praise you, God, to lift up your name, to feel your presence, Lord. God, to come together as a family, God, and worship you, God. God, I pray now that you would use your word, God. Help us, encourage us, strengthen us, Father. Show us, great God, that you've not abandoned us. And show us, great God, that there are many great things still in store for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God a big hand clap, please. Before I jump into the message here, I have noticed as a pastor and just as a member of the body of Christ that there are a lot of folk that run around thinking that what you're doing is it. There is no more, no chance, no hope, no whatever. What do you mean, Pastor Wayne? The enemy has done a very good job over the years in making Christians believe that what you're doing, that's all you're ever going to do. That's all you're capable of doing. Now, that's a lie, first of all. That's a tool used by the enemy. And he uses that tool as long as you allow him to use that tool. And I say it time and time and time again. We allow him to beat on us, kind of like what the scripture says. We allow him to hunt us down. We allow him to do all these things to us. But the way the scripture says it, we're never knocked down. We're not destroyed. We're not abandoned. We're never any of that stuff. Do you believe that this morning? I have some people here that I kind of want to read you little snippets of their lives. And admittedly, these folks are secular people that everybody knows. Amen. Stevie Wonder, anybody know who he is? What I read about him says, Stevie Wonder has received 22 Grammy Awards over his 51-year music career. The most Grammy Awards ever received by a single male recording artist. That's pretty awesome. As you probably know, Stevie Wonder has been blind since birth. That's pretty cool. But that hasn't stopped him from releasing more than 30 number one hits and being one of the greatest performers who has ever lived. Think about that. That's a man blind from birth and yet. The next. Christopher Reeve. Does anybody know who that is? The real Superman. Somebody say amen. Christopher Reeve achieved fame for his portrayal of Superman, the man that was invincible and a national hero for many, as well as starring in many other hit films. After being thrown from a horse in 1995, however, the actor shattered the first two vertebrae in his spine and was paralyzed from his neck down. Upon, first, upon first finding out he was a quadriplegic, Reeve stated that he was very depressed and contemplated suicide. However, his time in physical and occupational rehabilitation inspired him, and he spent the rest of his life campaigning on behalf of progressive research and was even named Time Person of the Year. Although he has since passed away from medical complications, 
The Christopher Reed Paralysis Foundation still carries on his legacy of advocacy and research. I'm sure when Christopher Reeve, after portraying Superman, this great superhuman, after he became a quadriplegic, he probably, as this said, life's over. There's nothing else. Stop. Buzz Aldrin. Does anybody know who Buzz Aldrin is? Buzz Aldrin rose through the ranks of the United States Air Force and eventually became the second man to step foot on the surface of the moon. However, his return to Earth was marred by a slew of personal problems, namely a struggle with both depression and alcoholism. After a long struggle that would truly test his strength, courage, and self-motivation, he recognized and sought treatment for both of his illnesses and has since become an outspoken supporter of space exploration and even received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His legacy also inspired the name of a beloved cartoon character. I wish the little ones were in here. Buzz Lightyear. Anybody know who Buzz Lightyear is? We drank, ate, slept Buzz Lightyear for the longest time. Amen. Some of you have already heard the story of Lud Ludwig von Beethoven, so I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to mention this one here. And some people might say, Pastor, I don't know why you're using this lady. But Oprah Winfrey. Everybody knows about her, don't we? Some people may agree or disagree with what she says, and I agree with or disagree with a lot of what she says. But looking at Oprah today, you'd never imagine that she was born to a teenage single mother in impro impoverished rural Mississippi, or that she gave birth to a son at 14 who died in infancy. As a child, Oprah often had to wear dresses made of potato sacks that all her fam that, that's all her family could afford, and today, that couldn't be further than the truth. So here's these several different people that we have mentioned that everybody's heard of. They've had some sort of adversity in their life. Some sort of adversity that would probably knock them down cripple them, if you will, stop them dead in their tracks, make them feel sorry for themselves, and never do another thing in the re for the rest of their lives. I want to read one more. Wayne's not in here, is he? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. There he is. Sorry. FDR is often regarded as one of the greatest American presidents by citizens of all different political leanings. Is that right, Wayne? Whatever. Although he was careful not to be seen in his wheelchair in public, he contracted at an early age what? Polio. And what did it do to him? Amen. But that didn't stop this guy. He was elected to office how many times? Four times, making him the only American president to be elected more than twice. So here are all these different people that have dealt with adversity, that have dealt, dealt with struggle, dealt with trial, dealt with pain, dealt with issues galore. And as I said, it would be something that would truly stop an individual. And yet, when I read all these bios on all these people, I don't hear one mention of God in their bio. I don't hear them say one thing about God. But if I flip over to another book, a book that you and I are supposed to be reading quite often, amen, we read of a lot of people just like these people who have done many great things even after tragedy has hit them, amen? You know, aren't you glad that God is a God who likes to take broken things and make them new again. Somebody say amen. There is a man in scripture that I want to use this morning. His name is Mephibosheth. Has anybody ever heard of him? Some of you Bible scholars have heard of him. Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was a man who really had some issues. Somebody say amen. His granddad 
was a great king, had a lot of, a, lot of power, a lot of authority. His dad was the son of this great king. His dad was the best friend of another great king. Somebody say amen. But some things took place over time. The man, his grandfather's name was what? Saul. His dad's name was what? Jonathan. But how many of you know that David and Saul, they had some issues? Somebody say amen. Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. So upon hearing things like that, Grandpa Saul became very what? Jealous. And because he became very jealous, what happened? It created this civil war, if you will, between Saul and David. But I love the way Scripture really portrays David. David was one who really tried to honor his king, really tried to do what was right. But the Scripture tells us that it was never, ever good enough. Amen. And if you know the stories, there was great fallout, there was great war, there were great issues that took place. But to get down to the simple part of the story, it created a big divide. It created this big rift between David and the people that he loved. And because it created this big rift, it started to cause problems for the children of the people who caused the big rift. When you hear the story about poor Mephibosheth, man, you want to cry. The poor guy, his grandpa was murdered, his dad was gone, all these things happened. And basically what I read in the story is he was taken care of by a nurse. And as the nurse was running away, the nurse dropped him. I've heard of people being dropped on their head and I've actually known a few, amen. But this poor guy was dropped and the story tells that his legs were broken and because they couldn't get to a place to get him set, they didn't heal properly. And it took away his ability to walk. And the Bible says that basically, you know, he lived the life of a pauper for a while. He was somebody who once had prominence. He was somebody who was once related to this great figure, but now he was nothing. And really, it wasn't from anything that he had done himself. Everything that happened to him happened because of somebody else. He got injured because his nurse couldn't hold on to him. He was separated from a great kingdom and great wealth because of his grandpa. There were these issues. Now imagine what Mephibosheth would have thought or what he was thinking. He was probably sitting around in his misery. Probably sitting around worrying. Probably sitting around thinking nothing else good will come my way ever again. Have you ever thought that before? Lord, you've forgotten me. Lord, you've abandoned me. Lord, you've dumped me. Lord, you're not listening to me. I heard a great quote lately, just recently. It said something about, we all know that when you're taking a test, the teacher is quiet. Man, I enjoyed that quote when I heard it because it was like a light bulb went off in my head because we have often said it, man, I'm going through these trials, I'm going through these pains, I'm going through these woes, and we're saying, God, where are you? But he's not answering. He's silent. He's not giving us the answer that we're looking for. He's not meeting our needs fast enough. But you know the amazing thing about the story about Mephibosheth is he wasn't forgotten. He was not forgotten. As I read, I couldn't help but think, you know what? It wasn't time yet. David still had some things to straighten out. David still had some wars to fight. David hadn't forgotten his promise to his best friend. He, he, he fully intended to take, you know, to make sure that the problem was, or that the promise was fulfilled, but he had some things he had to deal with. 
the story goes on to say something about Mephibosheth just sitting around one day and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door. And I like the way the story tells it because back then, if somebody was your enemy, what did you do, Steve? You wiped them out. You didn't just kill your enemy, you destroyed his family. Why did you destroy all of his family? You don't want any of them to rise up and come back and get you. Somebody say amen. So one day there's a knock at Mephibosheth's door and he's probably thinking, today's the day. I felt God when I said that. Today's the day. Today's the day that they're going to finish me off. Today's the day that they're going to finally put me in the grave. Today's the day that they're going to finally put the nails in my coffin. But how many of you know the story doesn't actually go that way? Somebody say amen. The story goes a completely different way, a complete opposite way. The knock on the door was not uh, David coming to say, I'm going to finish you off. But David was coming to say, I remember what I told your dad. Anybody been raised by Christian parents? Come on, help me. Anybody not raised by Christian parents? Have you had any Christians in your family tree anywhere at all? Somebody help me this morning. You all have heard me say when I did my family tree on the Williams side, I was looking for the Christians, and it wasn't too far really before we could find the Christians. And I think I've said this before, Jose. Even though we may not have been raised by the right people, there was somebody along the line that was praying for us, amen? They were unselfish enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to pray for myself today. I'm going to pray for my children, and I'm going to pray for my grandchildren. I'm going to pray for my grandchildren's grandchildren, amen? I'm going to pray that God's hand of protection will be on them. Let me ask you this morning, do you believe that God hears those kinds of prayers, amen? Do you believe that God not only hears them, but when the time comes, he remembers those prayers? You see, God's not senile. God doesn't have Alzheimer's or sometimers, as I think my mom says sometimes. He remembers. He doesn't forget. He remembers his children. Somebody say amen. He remembers the prayers that his children pray. Amen. And there are times when we're sitting around and we're thinking, oh, Lord, nothing more bad could happen to us. God, everything has gone wrong up to this point. God, what else could go wrong? You ever said that before? And then all of a sudden, dear God, what could happen next? Anybody ever said that? Come on. Sometimes, saints, a blessing can be knocking at our door, and we've allowed life to make us so stinking hard that we turn it away. Somebody hear what I'm saying this morning. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes a blessing can be knocking at our door, and because life has been so hard, we've become so tough, we have the tendency to push it away. Mm, mm. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. Think about it with me just for a second, Steve. How many blessings from God have we pushed away? Just because today I'm not in a good mood. Just because today I've had a bad week, I've had a bad month, I've had a bad year, and bless God, yes, I'm in church this morning, and isn't that good enough? Somebody help me this morning. I'm reminded of a picture that I remember seeing in my grandma's living room. Do you all remember this, Mom and Dad? There was this picture on the wall that had Jesus knocking on the door. And as a child, I never really understood what that meant, but I do now. Dave, all I remember is there's Jesus standing at this door, and all you can see him doing is looks like he's knocking on a door, but the door is never opened because it's just a picture. But we all know what that is. Jesus is saying, let me in. 
Let me come in. Let me sit down with you. Let me sup with you. Let me get to know you. Amen. Let me talk to you. Let me change your life. Let me assist you. Let me help you. And sometimes he helps us when we're going through the roughest, toughest times of our lives. When we're being tested, when we're going through troubles, when we're going through trials, that's when the best lessons are being taught. And can I tell you something? Sometimes we have to go through those trials because when the blessings come, if we haven't gone through those trials, we don't know how to handle the blessing when God hands it to us. Are you hearing me this morning? Have you ever had God just give you something out of the blue, amen, and you didn't know what to do with it, amen? There have been times blessings have come my way, and all I can do is just sit and cry when it shows up. Pastor Wayne, why'd you sit and cry? Why didn't you do a dance? Because in my heart, I thought that I was undeserving of what was coming my way. But God, when I read his word, it says he loved me enough that even though I felt undeserving in his mind, he said, Wayne is more than deserving for what I'm about to give him. Saints, I want to tell you something this morning. If God gives you a blessing, just simply cry if you want to, but at some point throw up a hand and say, God, I am so unworthy of all your blessings, but thank you. Amen. Mm. Every now and again, saints, you and I just need to throw up a hand and say, God, I am so undeserving of all the blessings that you have given me, but thank you. You know what praise is? Man, there's two kinds of praise. There's a praise that when you want something from somebody, give me something, lavish them with love and this, but there's a kind of praise that just stands there and says, God, I am so unworthy of all the things you have done for me. And God, all I know to do is love on you today. When was the last time you simply just loved on God without Steve having to tell you to do it? You see, loving on God because you want to, that's a phenomenal thing. That's a great thing. That's when the tears come to your eyes. I was sitting back there the other night by myself enjoying the service. You know what I was doing? I was looking around. I was watching Mikey do the count. I was watching people take up offering. I was watching people work the stage. I was watching people work the sound booth. And I sat there and I began to cry. Why? Because Mikey wasn't counting good enough? I always tell him to count to 500, no matter how many times he had to count, get to 500. If you've got to go around the, off, around the sanctuary a couple times, Jay and Brian, keep going until you get that $5,000 offering. Make it happen, fellas. I just sat there and I cried. Why? Because all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord just overwhelmed me. You ever done that before? You just look around and you see God working and God doing amazing things. And you see people that were once lost in their sin and now they're in God's house and they're working. And saints, if you don't stop and look at that and find time to just say, God, you're amazing, then something's wrong. Just sit there and say, God, wow. Mom said, Wayne, are you sick? Something wrong? Nothing's wrong. I was just enjoying what God has been doing. The other day at work, I went outside at lunchtime. I wasn't hungry, but I could feel God, and I just sat there, and it was one of those days when the wind was blowing about 60, 70 miles an hour. My badge was flapping off me, beating me to death, amen, so I had to hold it down. But I sat there, and I just looked into the wind. I said, Lord, clean me. Cleanse me. Make me appreciative of just all the things you have done for me. Have you ever said that to God? God, make me appreciative of all the things you have done for me. Well, this knock comes on a door to Mephibosheth. Does anybody know this story? Hey, dude. Is your dad's name Jonathan? Yup. He had a best friend. He had a best friend, and he remembers your dad, and he remembers the promise he made to your dad. And here's an invitation. Will you come? 
Jessica, I'm telling it my way, but that's okay. Here's an invitation. Will you come? Sir, I can't walk. Don't worry about it. We'll get you there. Sir, I don't have the right clothes to wear to this kind of a dinner engagement. Sir, don't worry about it. We'll clean you up. We'll give you what you need. Sir, I am so undeserving for this. I was just sitting here waiting for you to come and finish me off. Don't worry about it. You're wanted. Amen. And this guy who thought he was kicked to the side, he was kicked to the curb, he was forgotten. All the things that, man, if Grandpa hadn't messed up, I would have today. This man found himself sitting at a table that in his mind he should not be sitting at. And he was rubbing elbows, Sarah, man with the elite. He was rubbing elbows with the people who had authority. He was rubbing elbows with the people, man, who had money, who had all this great stuff. That's who he's rubbing elbows with. This man who was once incapable of taking care of himself. This man who at one time had nothing. This man who at one time had been forgotten. This man who at one time didn't have two nickels to rub together. Now he's sitting at the table with kings. Now he is sitting at the table with royalty. Can I tell you something this morning? All those people that I read about, read to you about before, man, they're great and they've done some pretty amazing things here on this earth. But I'm reminded, Lorraine, of a scripture that says we should be storing up our treasures where? In heaven, amen where neither moth nor rust will corrupt them. Somebody say amen. I can't wait till the day when you and I cross into the glory world and that crown that we have that has jewels on it, one day you and I are just going to pluck it off and we're going to throw it at the feet of Jesus. Why? Because it doesn't really matter. And Misty, we're going to sit there throughout eternity next to the king of of all kings. Somebody say amen. We're going to be surrounded by the angels. We're going to be looking at stuff that Donald Trump has never seen. Somebody say amen. We're going to be seeing things that not even the richest of the rich in this world have ever seen before. But can I tell you this? Before we get there, Bev, there are great things that we can be doing right now. You know, the other night when you had those kids up singing, you got to have them ready to do that again real soon. That's now one of my favorite songs, amen. Donna, when I was watching those babies up there singing, they fight for the mic, man. You ever watch them? They are fighting. Oh, I can get louder than you. There's a tug of war going on. I want to sing, I want to be heard. All the singing that you taught them here, Bev, and heaven are going to go, give me the mic. I want Jesus to hear me. Mm. You have people like Steve fighting for the mic. I want to sing Jesus that song that I made up because I keep forgetting the words. That's okay. There are songs that you and I are going to be able to sing to him that even the angels can't sing. You know why? Because one time you and I were kicked to the curb by this world, amen. We were kicked to the world by people. We allowed sin to destroy us, but Jesus said, I remember you. Mm. And I'm glad one day, go ahead and give him a hand clap, please. Would you do that? I am glad one day when you and I cross in front of his path, he's going to look down and he's going to see a blood stain across our names. And you know what he's going to say at that point? I remember you. You're the one that my son went to the earth and suffered and died for. Somebody say amen. Enter in, amen, to some amazing stuff. Will you stand with me, please? 
Saints, I am preaching with a monster headache right now. Pastor Wayne, why'd you tell us that? Are you wanting some kind of present, some prize? No. Sometimes serving God is hard. Sometimes we go through trials that in our minds, they make no sense. Anybody ever gone through something like that before? They make no sense. They just come up out of nowhere. We heard Jensen Franklin on the way in this morning. Sometimes even the great Jensen Franklin can get a little mean in his preaching. Pastor, what do you mean, mean in his preaching? He was scolding some Christians. Jensen Franklin scolding Christians. Yeah, man, his program goes out everywhere. He was scolding them. You know why? He said, because sometimes when you go through trials, you forget about God. Sometimes when the enemy is knocking on your door, you get mad and you forget about God. You just want to throw your hands up and quit and say, Dear Lord. I don't remember the exact words, Lord. But he said, Saints, when you're going through it, man, stand strong. Saints, when you're battling it, stand strong. I could imagine Jen Mephibosheth, man, like I say, that knock to come at the door, he was probably, Rhonda, expecting the worst. And then when he opened it and realized it was a dinner invitation to the king's house. Yeah. Steve, man, we've been taught this our whole life. One day there's going to be a trumpet sound. It's going to be like that knock at the door, Bill. And Mikey, when we hear it, if things are right between us and the Lord, man, we're out of here. We're gone. Pastor, do you really believe that? I believe that. When that trump sounds, Brother Jack, gravity is not going to hold us anymore. I can't wait for that day, Mary. I can't wait. And I would venture a guess that some of us are going to be standing in front of the throne and saying, God, I really didn't expect to be here. I don't know if we're even going to say anything. It's just Wayne teaching there. You know what's cool, though? It wasn't because of anything you had done. It was because of a promise our Father made. When the blood is shed... Over sins. When the ultimate sacrifice is made, that's my promise. The sins will be covered. I feel God this morning. Are your sins covered? You've got to know that. You've got to know it. You've got to know it. Are your sins covered? Will you bow your heads for a moment, please? Close your eyes just for a moment. Will you be honest with me, please? If you, if your sins are not under the blood, would you raise your hand, please? Praise God. Praise God. Do you want to sit at the king's table one day? I do. Are you ready to accept an invitation to sit at the king's table? Because if you are, he's calling out to you right now. He's extending an invitation to you right now. And listen, for those of you that have been battling, struggling, fighting, listen, there are still great things in store for you. God has just begun the work in you. He's just begun it. And if you would allow him to complete it, all the things that are in store are amazing. 
If you're not saved, these altars are open. Would you please come? These altars are open. Would you please come? Saints, take somebody by the hand if you would and invite them to the altar with you. And let's just spend some time in prayer this morning, loving on God. And if you've got sin in your life, man, be people come around and we'll pray with you and we'll help you make that right. Father, I pray as they come to prayer, Lord, I pray, God, that you would remind them, God, God, that they belong to you, God, that they are your child, God, you haven't forgotten your promises made to them, Lord. Let them know, God, that you still have great things in store for them, Lord. Love on them right now, I pray, Lord. Bless them right now, Lord, I pray. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name.
ground You took the fall And thought of me somewhere up in Ohio a couple weeks ago and as he was walking he just collapsed flat when they got him to a hospital they realized that the guy was almost dry of blood there was hardly anything pumping in his veins whatsoever so when they got him there they had to of course fill him up in the text that I was getting from John you could tell there were tears you could tell there was distress you could tell there was doubt and he was saying, pray, 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 pray. And we prayed. Well, Lori shot the text out this last week, and the text basically said, make sure them people know. And you know what them people are, right? Them's us. Amen. Because he said when he went to UC to the doc, the doctor said, hey, it's miraculous. We're not sure what's going on. But somehow you have... I guess, retained what we've given you, and now you're creating your own. Amen. You've got a hand clap. Amen. Now, here's the amazing thing. I don't know if the man was a Christian or not, but I'd have to venture a guess after that ordeal. He better know who God is now, right? God grabbed his attention. We have this beautiful young lady sitting around the front row. Her name is Ariel. I work with her mom. And her mom invited us up was it last summer to pray with her grandmother her grandmother was not doing well and Norman was with me and I forget who else was with me and we put that baptistry in the back of a red truck and we're booking it to Bethel Ohio and I remember pulling in there was all these people sitting in the front yard we drove around the back we took that baptistry out Laney had his keyboard and he came along. We took that baptistry out. We are in the back. We had a little church service in Bethel, Ohio with about 20 people, I guess. Baptized, I don't know, five or six people. It was a beautiful day. And that's when I really got to know this young lady. She was coming a little bit before, I think, but I really got to know her a little bit better. Are you a Christian now, Ariel? She does. And she's going to come up and she's going to give you a testimony. There was a little text we shot out this last week. Amen. And I'm just going to let her finish it. Come on up here. Ariel. Uh, this past week, um, I was going about work, doing whatever I do. I, I'm a phlebotomist at UC Hospital. Um, I was just seeing patients, enjoying my day. I got a phone call uh, about a past mistake I had made. It was something I had done in the computer to where I got into my own chart. And that's a big no-no at my work. <laughs> um, basically, it's termination worthy. 
So I got the phone call and basically was told I had to wait three days to find out if I was going to keep my job or not. So in these three days, I was just sitting there thinking, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm going to lose my job. I'm, how am I going to pay my car payment? How am I going to pay for so many things? And um, I had three patients come to me, or three things come to me. One was a patient who told me that he, one, thought I needed a raise. And two, was just telling me how thankful he was that I was there to draw his blood, that I had done such a good job that he, I made it a pleasurable experience for him. And I needed to hear that. And then I had a doctor's appointment. So I had one day where I had a half day off. I would go to where I used to work. I actually used to work at the Women's Center in um, Westchester. And when I was there, uh, one of my old co-workers came up to me and out of nowhere just tells me, you have been sorely missed. You, sh We have patients still coming in saying, where's the blonde girl? So I, I got told that by her. And then my um, doctor even told me how much I had been missed. So even though I was afraid and I was already setting myself to be fired on Friday, I kept thinking, at least I made a difference that I'm there for a different reason than just a paycheck. Well, Friday comes around, I go into HR, and they tell me that I'm a good employee and I got to keep my job. Amen. Out of all of that. So, so I, I truly am thankful for the blessing. I, I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think I, I deserved it. I'm just newly into the Christian life and I didn't think I needed it, but he's there for me when I needed it the most. So. Do you guys know anything about HIPAA violations? Those are big no-nos, and they usually don't cut you any break on stuff like that. But her mama pulled me aside one day, and she told me what had happened. And I said, you tell that girl we're praying, and we're just going to see what God does. Because God doesn't forget his children, amen. And God can and will perform the miraculous if we allow him to. Would you stand, please? It's good to have Henry with us today. Amen. Bless you, sir. Amen, Paula. Brother Grixon, we can pray for him. He's a good man. Good, good, good man. I feel God in this place. You feel him? God is amazing, folks. Make sure you're spreading your testimony. Let people know what God's doing for you. Amen. Father, we come before you now, God, so thankful for this wonderful morning, God. Thankful for an opportunity to praise you, God, an opportunity to be taught, God, and to hear your word. Father, we're thankful for Ariel's testimony, God. We're thankful for the miraculous things that you do for your children, Lord. Father, we pray for Brother Grixon, God, that you would move upon him, God. Father, God, that you would move upon those kidneys, we pray. God, go with us and help us to be great lights to this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shake hands and be friendly if you would, please. Come back tonight if you can. Amen. Your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your faithfulness 